Hello, I'm John Crane, and I have the privilege of serving as the conference lay leader for our Western North Carolina Annual Conference. On behalf of our Board of Laity, thank you for serving as a laity delegate to our 2023 Annual Conference and for taking the time to watch this recording of some of the laity members of our conference who are seeking to be elected to serve as laity delegates to the Southeastern Jurisdictional Conference in 2024. The individuals that you'll hear from on this video have volunteered to participate to share information about themselves and their desire to serve as a laity delegate. They're doing this as a way to help you get to know them better. But please note that whether or not a nominee is or is not participating in the recording does not impact that nominee's eligibility to be elected. Unfortunately, some of our nominees simply were not available for the date and time selected for this recording session. So while we hope that you'll find the information shared helpful, we also encourage you to read each candidate's written profile, which is available on the annual conference 2023 website. On behalf of the Board of Laity, I'd also like to extend my thanks to all of our nominees for their willingness to stand for election. Choosing to make themselves available to serve in this way represents a significant commitment of their personal time to prepare for and to attend the conference. And we're grateful to have laity who are well qualified, excited, and willing to assume this responsibility. Joining me to serve as our facilitator is Reverend Kim Ingram, who serves as our conference secretary and our director of ministerial services. I'd like to extend my thanks to Kim for coordinating this session and for her facilitation assistance which is just another in a long list of things that she and her staff have done and will be doing to ensure that we have a wonderful time of worship, connection, and yes, taking care of some business at our annual conference when we meet at Lake Junaluska. And so with that, I'll turn it over to Kim and to our nominees. So we'll hear from our first nominee, John Barbie. Greetings, fellow delegates, as we prepare to convene at Lake Junaluska in a couple of weeks. My name is John Barbee. I am retired and a proud member of Collins Grove United Methodist Church in Greensboro. I am asking you for your support as I am a candidate for a lay delegate for the 2024 Southeastern Juridical Conference. As delegates, we embark on issues of the United Methodist Church that are paramount in our church. In the news and around the world, we have an opportunity to be a pivotal child of God as we need to understand, review, and act upon those issues. We need to move from past disaffiliation and move to affiliation. Stop separating and putting children of God into separate buckets. We need to support diversity, and our church should reflect the population. We should have open arms for all we make disciples for Jesus. As we move toward the conference in 2024, I've committed to making myself available for meetings, planning sessions, to make sure we're the best prepared to represent you and the Western North Carolina Conference. My career as Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing in the United States and Canada has prepared me with the skills for work ahead. I will be able to provide a vision from outside the United States as to how people work and negotiate. I'm a graduate of North Carolina Central University. As an appointee by the governor of North Carolina, I served on the board of trustees at North Carolina Central University for eight years. At Collins Grove, with over 20 years membership, I've held many positions as trustee, finance, United Methodist men, and currently I serve as a chair of church council. I am John Barbie asking for your support and vote for the delegate position at the 2024th Jurisdictional Conference. Thank you. Thank you, John. Next, we have Debbie Black. Hello, my name is Debbie Black and I'm a certified lay minister at Mount Pleasant United Methodist Church in Kimesville, North Carolina. I enjoy my work here as Director of Family Ministries. I serve all ages. I primarily provide pastoral support, work with the children's ministry, 
serve as liturgist, serve by preaching, write devotions to support the pastor's messages, and do some administrative duties. There has never been a more important time in the United Methodist life to be inclusive. The discussion about LGBT issues has become the most talked about discussion in churches. Sadly, it has become a hate conversation. It is important to me to be, take part in the Southeastern Jurisdiction Conference to listen and offer prayer and support for all voices. My understanding of the LGBT discussion has continued to evolve. Disaffiliation from the United Methodist Church is not the answer to the questions we face. We must interpret our answers from the whole scripture, including the Spirit's intention in the words we love so much. If we are to be non judgmental, then we must remove our stigmas of being lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. This is important for the health and well being of the church worldwide. Prejudices and discrimination will continue to label the church as non-inclusive if we do not address these issues. Jesus loves people, no matter who they are. Jesus loves the world, all the world. The world is waiting for the church to love them. I'm Debbie Black, and I thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Debbie. And next we'll hear from Kim Burns. Hello, my name is Kim Burns and I'm an active member at Hudson United Methodist Church in Hudson, North Carolina in the Appalachian District. I thank you for the opportunity to run as a delegate. Um, I will say I just completed my 30th year as a um, public high school teacher and uh, teenagers are among my favorite people in the entire world. I love being a United Methodist. I wholeheartedly believe in our mission to make disciples for Jesus to transform the world. I believe God loves all of his children and gives each person unique and special gifts to help uh, make our world better. A few of the things that I'm passionate about, uh, social justice issues, race relations, equality, and mental health, and especially mental health for our young people. I'm happiest when our churches work together to help our neighbors and focus on ministries outside the church walls. I believe we're here to worship God and be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. If I'm selected as a delegate for Western North Carolina and Southeast jurisdiction, I will maintain a positive attitude and work ethic. I will actively listen to concerns from my fellow church members throughout the conference and district. I will faithfully serve and attend all the meetings and do my best to promote the United Methodist denomination in a positive and loving way, always erring on the side of love, grace, and mercy for all. Moreover, I really wholeheartedly believe that growth in our denomination is possible. There's much that we can do to invite others, including teens and young adults, into worship, whether it be through new worship spaces or experiences or traditional worship opportunities. I firmly believe and have faith that the best days of our denomination are ahead of us. Let's go love as Christ loved us. Uh, once again, my name is Kim Burns, and I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Kim. And now we'll hear from Jesse Caldwell. Had to unmute myself. Hey, everybody. Jesse Caldwell, third generation of First United Methodist Church in Gastonia. Um, the uh, credentials and qualifications and attributes that I would hope to bring to this uh, delegate position are set forth in the biographical submission that, uh, that uh, as John Crane said, is available to you uh, on the lay website. So I'm not going to be redundant and take up your time with that. But I do want to say three things. Number one, I've read every one of these uh, biographical profiles. I can tell you this, you can't go wrong electing any of these people, every one of these people. I'm convinced, I mean, this necessarily would do an outstanding job. Secondly, um, the, um, the, the work I've done at the local church level, the district level, particularly uh, in, uh, in lay speaking, preaching in over 70 churches and, and in teaching lay speaking, uh, lay sermon courses, and at the conference level work I've done there, along with uh, my uh, 50 years in the law as a lawyer, as a judge, as a mediator, 
and extensive work in the uh, local and the statewide community and all kinds of different uh, organizations, I think, gives me um, some, uh, hopefully, some abilities to build collaboration, consensus, and cooperation, and uh, to analyze issues and to be able to vocal and articulate um, uh, appropriate uh, responses. Uh, I would be honored and humbled to serve as a uh, jurisdictional delegate. And thirdly, what we need to do above all is to pray that God will, will have the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit will lead us during our general conference at uh, landmark uh, uh, gathering next year, our jurisdictional conference where we elect uh, our bishops, and that uh, when we're through, we can, in the words of the old hymn, say, Jesus led me all the way. God speed to all of his journey blessings as we continue forward as United Methodists. My name is Jesse Caldwell. Thank you, Jesse. And now we'll hear from Russ Darnell. Thank you, Kim. I'm Russ Darnell, and I've been a Methodist all my life. I graduated from a Methodist college and served as a lay leader with at least, and partnered with four different pastors. And I was a lay leader at the Blue Ridge District. These opportunities have given me some insights into the tensions as well as the beauty of a connected church. I believe our church is at a pivotal point. We've been through some difficult times and now it's time for us to think about how we can become a more inclusive, more gracious, and actually a more Christ-like church. We live in a world that is growing more violent and hateful, a world that needs a loving, inviting, and caring church. The world needs us. We need to help our pastors develop the knowledge and skills to succeed in this new environment. We need leaders to guide us and inspire us. And we have been blessed to have leaders like Bishop Carter and his team. If we are to become the beacons of hope, we need to have instructive and innovative dialogue. We're gonna build on a foundation of love and justice and create a church that is relevant to the people who are struggling. And it plays a vital role as a beacon of hope, of compassion, and of unity. I'm excited about the future of our church, and I want to be part of these discussions. I want to thank you. Again, my name is Russ Darnell. Thank you, Russ. And now we'll hear from Vicki Lawrence. Thank you, Kim. Hi, my name is Vicki Lawrence, and I'm the youth pastor at First United Methodist Church in Franklin in the Smoky Mountain District. I work with the youth about 70% of my time, and the other 30% is filled with pastoral care, worship, and pretty much anything else that comes up. I've been in lay ministry for 17 years and an annual conference delegate for most of those years. I live in Franklin, and I have been married for 22 years. I have two daughters, one 21 and one 19, and I sure want to make the world a better place for them. I'm graduating from Duke Divinity School in December of 23. And my goal in ministry is to help bring the church, our community, and the world together. I feel a strong call to serve as a lay delegate for the Western North Carolina Conference at the Southeastern Jurisdictional Conference, because I believe that everyone has a right to worship and serve God, no matter their sexual orientation. My prayer is that our United Methodist Church remains a church that reaches out to all in the name of Jesus Christ. I'll end with a scripture passage that drives my life the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 37 through 40. He replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. You must love your neighbor as you love yourself. All the law and prophets depend on these two commands. So let's love our neighbors as we love ourselves. If I'm elected as delegate, that is what I will strive to protect. Thank you. Again, my name is Vicki Lawrence. Thank you, Vicki. 
Now we'll hear from Margie Ligon. Hi, I'm Margie Ligon, at-large delegate for the Catawba District and a lifelong Methodist. I've served on every committee in the Methodist Church there is, and you know we love our committees. Uh, in 2007, I moved from volunteer leadership into a part-time position in a local church. And as I served there, I felt called to go into full-time ministry. So I left my teaching career after 22 years and went into full-time ministry. And at the same time, started attending school at Duke Divinity and got my Master's of Arts in Christian Practice in 2017. As a Methodist, I have pride in the work that we as a church have done in missions and reconciliation and social justice, but our work is not done. And I have felt great sadness, as I know many here have, and have had pain watching the splintering in our denomination and us losing focus on the reconciling work of God. I do believe the changes are needed in the Methodist Church. There are changes needed at all levels of legislation. We need to accept change. We need to be more diverse, and, but we still need to remain as one unified body, doing the work that God has called us to do and bring healing and reconciliation to this broken world. As I retire, I believe God is calling me to use my experience to work as a delegate to help guide the future of our denomination. I hope for the opportunity to pave the way for all persons to feel loved, empowered, desired, and accepted by our church. And I pray God will use me to be a voice to help restore faith in our denomination and the knowledge of God's grace for all. Thank you for this opportunity to serve, Margie Ligon. Thank you so much, Margie. And now we'll hear from Blaine Moore. Blaine, I just realized you're talking, but you're still on mute. So if you'll try again. Hope this doesn't interrupt everything. <laughs> no, you're great. Go ahead, Blaine. Okay. Good day. My name is Dr. Blaine Moore. Let me first say that like Jesse Caldwell, I am honored to be among such qualified nominees for representation to the Southeastern Jurisdictional Conference. I have belonged to the three United Methodist churches during the last 40 years. And at Salem United Methodist Church in Denver, my current uh, post, I have served as the lay leader for five years and I am currently its lay delegate. During my tenure at Salem, I have served on several of the church's committees including finance, nominations, and the staff parish relations committee. And there's a Sunday school class within the church that accepts me as its teacher. I don't know why. I am a certified lay speaker within the district and have performed worship services, including sermons. In 2020, I completed a nine month course called Spiritual Academy for Leading Transformation or SALT. The purpose of this course is to provide lay people with training, encouragement, and recognition of gifts that can be applied within the Christian community. I am a board member of our Emmaus, uh, Emmanuel Emmaus community, where I serve as the registrar. I'm proud to be part of this important group. I believe that God is calling me to use my spiritual gift of leadership. Our United Methodist Church is at a crossroads with many churches disaffiliating. This is a time to exhibit tolerance, compassion, and understanding for all those involved. We can do this by carefully evaluating all our discussions, petitions, and possible resolutions that are put forward at the Southeastern Jurisdictional Conference, evaluating the implications and future outcomes of these resolutions, voting with heart, mind, and soul, and finally praying that God will guide us during these times of division. My name is Blaine Moore, and I hope that you will select me as your representative to the Southeastern Jurisdictional Conference. Thank you, Blaine. Next, we'll hear from Joseph Navarro. Hello all, my name is Joseph Navarro. 
a long time at Methodist uh, from Harrison Methodist Church in Pineville, North Carolina. I'm a proud Latino American uh, born and raised in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, if I then uh, voted as delegate, I wish to be able to spread the grace and love that I have received from the United Methodist Church and be able to spread that to all others, whether they have received the grace and love of Jesus or not. Uh, during my time within the United Methodist Church, I've served on many various ways, uh, whether that be by the, uh, serving on youth council here at my church, church council, as well as uh, serving on my missions council as well. On the conference level, I have served on our conference council youth ministry since 2018, and for a stint of time also as the president. And since, 20, uh, since 2022, uh, since becoming an adult, I have also continued to volunteer with the conference council youth ministries as an adult, even throughout college. And since uh, last summer, it continue, uh, has had the pleasure of serving as Harrison's uh, lay delegate to annual conference. Uh, I'm currently a rising junior at a United Methodist affiliated Wofford College. Where, I'm, uh, where I am there currently a active member in our Wesley Fellowship Group, uh, where I, I continue to see how the United Methodist Church supports young people in various ways and where I wish to be able to give back to, uh, and be able to thank the United Methodist Church for all that they have done for young people and to uh, spread inclusion and diversity and just look forward for, uh, to where the United Methodist Church is going. And most importantly, I just want to be, a, a, as a delegate, be able to bring new, fresh, and youthful points of view and ways of thinking to the United Methodist Church. And again, my name is Joseph Navarro, and I ask for your support as a delegate. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joseph. Now we'll hear from Beth Osbar. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Beth Osbar, and yes, I am sitting in my car. I'm trying to do uh, two different things at one time. I'm very glad to um, have this opportunity to speak to you all. I go to St. Luke's United Methodist in, um, in Hickory, and so um, I am in the Catawba Valley District. I have been a United Methodist all my life, as well as some of the others. I uh, grew up in the church. I was uh, baptized and um, confirmed in the Methodist church, went to MYF and, and Girl Scouts. I even lived for a period of time at the Wesley Foundation at UNC Chapel Hill. Um, when I had my kids, I certainly uh, wanted them to grow up in the church and they were baptized in the church. And I did many of the things that mothers often do in the church, teaching children's Bible. Accompanying um, um, mission teams and youth on mission teams, youth choir um, groups. Both as a nurse and as a counselor, I have been a nurse and a nurse practitioner for 35 years. In 2017, I felt the call to go into lay ministry. And so I am a certified lay minister. I um, really felt that uh, lay people um, should, and, and it's beneficial to walk along beside uh, ministers, uh, ordained ministers, that they need our assistance um, and that we are able to do many things to, to help in, in ministry. So um, this past year, I've actually been able to co-pastor a three-point charge, and I have been through the disaffiliation process with these three churches. So I have learned a lot in this experience. I just feel I have um, done so many different things in the church, and I um, am a, a district lay delegate. I would just love the opportunity to become a lay delegate to the South Church Jurisdictional Conference. I have had a lot of experience working with Latinos and in racial reconciliation and in groups representing LGBTQ. And I um, totally uh, believe in our as a church to include and to love everyone. 
Um, I dream of a church that will be totally international in focus with all different colors and um, gender and nationalities represented. So I really appreciate this opportunity to uh, be considered for this position. And again, my name is Beth Oster. Thank you very much. Thank you, Beth. And now we'll hear from Suzanne Schilling. Greetings, everyone. My name is Suzanne Schilling. Shout out to everyone at Spruce Pine United Methodist Church. And let me just say how much I appreciate you considering electing me as a lay delegate for 2024. About my call to serve as lay delegate, I strongly believe that every level of church life, all voices need to be welcome to the table. This vision of acceptance of all, no matter culture, demographic, identity, or whatever, is, I believe, my strongest contribution to my local church, all the way to the general church. So what are my qualifications? Regarding leadership roles at the local church and community level, they include rape crisis counselor, disaster recovery through the local church, halfway houses, feeding ministries, hosting and leading small groups, and various volunteer roles at local shelters for women and children. Within the extended United Methodist Church, I'm currently part of the Western North Carolina Conference Episcopacy, the Blue Ridge District Committee of Ordained Ministry, the Foundation of Western North Carolina's Investment Team, and a district at large lay delegate for the Western North Carolina Annual Conference this year and several prior years. And I'm honored to serve our conference as the leadership coach for first year provisional clergy in their residency and ordained ministry journey. And I am also a coach for the Davidson Center for Clergy in Davidson, North Carolina. Again, I believe all of God's children are welcome to the table, even though we do not always agree. My desire is to show by example that disciples of Christ do not need to be the same. However, we do need to be unified in our desire to be the people of God here on earth. And if you of the Western North Carolina Conference believe me capable of faithfully representing everyone fairly and equally, then it would be an honor and delight to serve as lay delegate. Again, my name is Suzanne Schilling. Thank you so much for considering me. Thank you, Suzanne. And now we'll hear from Rick Vandette. My name is Rick Vandette. And when my wife and I first got married, we were not churchgoers. But when our son was born, my wife told me she was going to take him to church so he could grow up knowing Jesus and I could come if I wanted to. So I did. That was over 40 years ago, and I've been a United Methodist uh, ever since. And it was a decision that changed my life. That day, the growth in my career and in my faith made dramatic steps. I soon began a career as an administrator in the public schools starting as a middle school assistant principal and ending as superintendent of Hickory Public Schools. The first church we attended was in North Wilkesboro, and I became involved serving as a lay leader, as a lay speaker, choir member, Sunday school teacher, and member of several committees. And my wife and I led the MYF for a few years, and we were both annual conference delegates. And then we moved to Hickory and became involved at St. Luke's United Methodist Church. There, I have served in similar roles. Lay leader, Sunday school teacher, participated in the choir, serving on many committees. And currently, I am chair of staff parish relations and serve on finance, church council, and on our vision team. And my wife and I are, again, annual conference delegates. I was also trained by PlowPoint Ministries in helping churches resolve conflicts. My background also includes four years of active duty in the military with one year in Vietnam. My leadership skills and my many years of involvement in the Methodist Church qualify me to be a lay delegate, and I hope I can get your vote. I am passionate about the Methodist Church and am grateful for the opportunities the church has provided helping me grow in my faith and be closer to Jesus. As a lay delegate, I would follow my strong conviction that the United Methodist Church be a church open to all of God's people. I'm Rick Vandette, and I thank you. Thank you, Rick. 
And now we'll hear from Wally Vaughn. Hello, my name is Walter Vaughn, your Conference United Methodist Men President. First and foremost, I am deeply committed to the values and principles of the United Methodist Church. Throughout my life, I have witnessed the transformative power of faith, compassion, and service. As a lay delegate, I want to actively contribute to the spiritual growth of our connection and work towards a more inclusive and progressive church that embraces diversity and welcomes all with open arms. Secondly, I strongly believe in the importance of community engagement and social justice. Our jurisdiction faces various challenges ranging from poverty and inequality to racial and gender disparities. As a lay delegate, I want to advocate for exceptional Episcopal selection and initiatives that address issues head on, fostering a more just and equitable society. I want to bridge the gaps and ensure that the marginalized voices are heard and empowered within our church and beyond. Furthermore, that I'm er eager to foster a spirit of unity and collaboration among the diverse Methodist congregations in our jurisdiction. By encouraging open dialogue and understanding, we can create a vibrant network that shares ideas, resources, best practices. Together, we can strengthen our collective impact and bring about positive change in the lives of those we serve. Lastly, as lay delegate, I am committed to promoting the spiritual growth and discipleship within our connection. I want to encourage our members to deepen their faith, embrace the teachings of Christ, and actively engage in transformative actions. By empowering individuals and nurturing their spiritual journeys, we can create a ripple free effect that will extend far beyond our church walls, inspiring others to embark on their own faith journey. In conclusion, being a lay, lay delegate is a sacred opportunity to serve, uplift, and empower others. I am dedicated to creating a church that reflects the love and teachings of Jesus Christ, a church that is a beacon of hope and a force for positive change. I, Walter Vaughn, humbly ask for your support and trust in this endeavor, and together, let's build a stronger, more inclusive, and compassionate church for all. Thank you. And thank you, Walter. So you have heard from 13 of our 20 lay people who have offered themselves for election for three positions that we will be electing at the annual conference meeting, um, lay delegates to the jurisdictional conference. They will be added to the delegation that was elected in 2019 and will serve in 2024. I want to give a special thank you to John Crane, who continues to provide such amazing leadership in the areas of laity through the Board of Laity, but also things like this, making sure that first-time lay members annual conference get oriented, and we'll do that this week as well. So thank you, John, for your continuing leadership. We appreciate everybody who watches this video and who has gotten to this part of the video. And if you'll hang on with me for just another minute, I'm going to give you some instructions and information. You can find the bios for, e for all 20 people at the co annual conference webpage. And that is either you can link to it from the annual conference website, or you can go straight to www.ac2023.org. And in the left-hand column, you'll see where it talks about laity delegate elections. We will begin the election process in the opening business session, which will be on Friday, June the 16th. It starts at 1.30. And as soon as we've done some of the organizational work together, we will begin the election process. We will continue it through the annual conference meeting until all three persons have been elected. We want to remind you that you need to bring a voting device with you. So a smartphone will be the easiest thing, but you might also have a tablet or a laptop computer. And so reminder to all our lay delegates that you need to bring a voting device with you. If you do not have one, please talk with your pastor and hopefully your pastor can help you with the voting process when you all are together at the lake. Any other questions about annual conference or more information is being added all the time. There is just a ton of information available about what to expect, what to bring, where to be, when to be there. Um, so be sure to check out the annual conference webpage at www.ac2023.org. Thank you to everyone and good night.